Hello, my name's Ed, your friendly neighborhood junior doctor. And today we're gonna to be doing a tier list from Cells at Work. We're gonna be looking at the cells in your bloodstream using the Cells at Work characters. Spoilers, if you didn't know, <laughs> that's what they're based on. So let's jump into it. First up, the B cell. Got a lot of respect for the B cell. It matures into the plasma cell and their main job is to produce antibodies, which you've probably heard a lot about given the fact that we're in a pandemic. So he's really the end result of the adaptive immune response. And for that, he needs a lot of people to make sure he does his job properly. Still very important job to do. Without those antibodies, you're not gonna be neutralizing pathogens and the rest of your immune system is not gonna be able to recognize those pathogens. I'm not sure how long you could live without your B cells, probably a little bit of time. Cause when babies are born, they don't really have an adaptive immune response. So that's one thing going against him. Because he's the first one, he's a solid choice. And because he begins with B, I'm putting him in B tier. The neutrophil, here we go. Now you're talking. So the protagonist or one of the protagonists from Cells at Work and the most common white blood cells. So two thirds of your white blood cells are gonna be these bad boys. And for good reason, they are pretty much the main part of your innate immunity. So your body's ability to kill bacteria that it doesn't need to recognize the specifics of. Probably the coolest thing about them is that they phagocytose, so they eat. <laughs> the enemy, let's call them the enemy, but the pathogens. Imagine that, imagine someone you didn't like just eating them, got a lot of respect for that. And how long can you live without them? Not very long, we see this in practice. So people that are on chemotherapy or other reasons to suppress your immune system can be neutropenic, so have very low neutrophils. And what do they come in with? Well, you worry about them getting an infection and then becoming septic, so getting an overwhelming infection. So unless you're gonna spend your whole life hermetically sealed, you're gonna need those neutrophils. I'm gonna mark them down for one reason. They only really have one job, and that is to be very mobile and eat a lot of things. So for that reason, they're kind of a one-trick pony, but nevertheless, what they do do is pretty badass, and you definitely need them. So I'm gonna give them an A tier. Next up, our other protagonist, the red blood cell. Is it really a cell though? <laughs> because they've lost their nucleus. It's pretty much a cell membrane packed full of hemoglobin to help transport oxygen around. But yeah, it's still very much a cell. And this is represented in cells at work because the nucleus is the brain of the cell and the main character is a little bit ditzy. But there's some beauty in this simplicity of them because <laughs> it's probably the one cell in this list that you couldn't live for a single split second without. And so purely because of that, they are gonna be A tier. Next up, we have the eosinophil, and this is one you've really gotta marvel at the balls of this white blood cell. We agree that the neutrophils are badass because they phagocytose the bacteria, but come to think of it, that bacteria are tiny compared to them, so they can engulf them very easily. You know, they're basically picking on someone a lot smaller than them. Not the eosinophil though, they take on monsters compared to their size. So their job is to kill parasites, so many times bigger than them. It's the ultimate <laughs> David and Goliath story. Instead of a slingshot, they latch onto them and inject digestive enzymes into them. On any other day, that would be an S tier move. However, <laughs> the Cinefields are involved in some not so useful activities too. Sometimes they don't know when to stop. So they're involved in hypersensitivities, particularly a type one hypersensitivity like asthma, and you get lots of eosinophils in the area that produces lots of inflammation. That's not what you want. And so for that reason, I'm gonna bump it down a few places. It's, it's gonna go C tier. Next up, the basophil. Really? We're gonna talk about this guy. No one knows what they do, unless you were the poor sod that had to write a random PhD paper on them. No one knows these guys. And in Cells of Work, he's represented by this like mystic ninja. And just like mystic ninjas, you don't know what they do. You never see them. And there's probably not many of them either. I don't want to award them too harshly in case they come after me, but anything that makes up less than 1% of the white blood cells in your body, you could probably do without it. It's going C tier. Purely so I can sleep tonight. Monocytes. <laughs> Come on, dude. I mean, respect for the monocyte because it turns into the macrophage and the dendritic cell will get onto them. But on its own, 
Really? <laughs> We're gonna judge you on that? Judging these is like judging me when <laughs> I pissed my pants at nursery school. Monocytes, you're going to the bottom in the D tier. Also, look at this character. He's wearing all the PPE, stealing all the useful PPE from the other cells. Macrophage. Now we are talking. Everything about this cell is a badass. Macro, Fago is a big eater, just like a neutrophil. Okay, it's not as mobile or as plentiful as neutrophils, but does a neutrophil antigen present to kick off the adaptive immune response? I don't think so. Does a neutrophil eat old red blood cells to help recycle them? No, it doesn't. Although actually <laughs> eating your own cells Maybe that doesn't sound as good as it, I thought it did. Either way, proof it's better than the neutrophil. Neutrophils, after a couple of days around a wound, they bugger off. Who do they leave behind? The macrophages to sort out their mess. Basically, neutrophils ain't got no stamina. Leave it to the macros. Plus, <laughs> have you seen the size of the weapons they have in the anime? Whew. It's an S tier. It is an S tier cell hands down. Cytotoxic T cells, well, anything that kills cancer is all right by me. Also, we've all relied on them in the pandemic to kill viral infected cells, so they've done their bit. They're solid. I'm gonna stick them in an A, I think. Helper T cells. Now, being a nerd myself, you've got to respect fellow nerds. This cell, he's one of us. These guys are the unsung heroes. And you might think on paper, well, what do they really do? They are the team players, if not the leaders of your immune system at a cellular level, coordinating which cells are needed for a particular disease. I think calling them helpers underplays their value. And sadly, we know the impact of not having helper T cells because these are the cells that the HIV virus infects. So if you have this virus for a long amount of time and you're not treated, this can destroy all your helper T cells and meaning you become highly susceptible to opportunistic infections and some cancers. The helper T cell, it's an S tier for me. Dendritic cells, I mean, they look pretty cool. They have these projections. That's why they get their name because they have these tree-like projections because they are a huge antigen presenting cell. So the more projections they have, the more they can present the antigens on their surface. But they don't have the phagocytosing power of something like the macrophage. So for that, I can't rank them as high. They can keep the B cell company in the B tier. Natural killer cells. I mean, my three favorite words combined together, a fitting tribute to this cell. It has this amazing knack of being able to kill your own cells if they turn cancerous or become infected by a virus. That's pretty cool. You've heard that before with a cytotoxic T cell, but oh no, it's not part of the adaptive immune response. It doesn't need to be taught this, it just knows. Massive points for that. That's gonna take it all the way up to the A tier. Platelets, okay, these definitely aren't cells but that almost makes them cooler. They're actually just little budding off of larger sites called megacarrier sites. But thrombocytes, they're small, they're cute. <laughs> they stop you from bleeding to death. What else do you want them to do? Even though they're not a cell, they're still included on a full blood count. So they've squeezed themselves <laughs> into that blood test result. And that's because they're incredibly useful. I mean, you do see people with extremely low platelets, but they're very likely to have spontaneous bleeding. And if they do start bleeding, it's not gonna stop. The only reason that I can't put these in the top tier is that many people have to take antiplatelets. So <laughs> they try and kill these things. Why? Well, because these platelets can sometimes activate within the bloodstream, what we call a thrombus, and this can lead to heart attacks and strokes. So I'm sorry, guys. Although you're a fan favorite, I can't put you higher than a B tier. So there you have it. My tier list of all the blood cells from Cells at Work. What do you think? What did I get right? What did I get wrong? Obviously this is just my opinion. I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for putting the platelets in the B tier. I hope you learned something from this video or if not, just enjoyed me talking through them. Thanks again for all the support on the channel. I hope you're all well and I'll be back soon.